Ja, ja jag gör det mina skäl där. Okej, hej. Okej, hej guys. Uh, today uh, we're gonna show you how to mount these bindings on the Black Cross uh, Atlas 2022. Yeah, we're using the Atomic Shift MC13 bindings and uh, these are really good for both skiing on the pist and also off the pist and for uh, mountaineering. I just mounted the same bindings on my Salomon QST106 uh, and I think they're gonna fit these skis really well. So there are a few different parts in these bindings. We have the, the mounting plates for the tail units. We have the tail unit itself, the toe unit, and of course the brakes for the tail unit. Both the tail unit and the brakes both mount to the to the mounting plate, which mounts to the ski. So okay, so what do you need to mount the bindings on the ski? So this is a pretty straightforward job. All you need is a drill, some drill bits, wood glue, I'm using Pipe Bond Original, but anything will work. A small ratchet wrench will help a lot, and some optional tools. Calipers for checking your holes are all uh, in position. A center punch for transferring the holes from the template to the ski. And also a steel ruler, but a regular plastic one will work as well. So what, what are these? These are the small screws for mounting the toe unit, and it's a bit special, and I'm going to show you in a moment how to do it. Okay, so these come with, with the binding? Yes. Okay. All screws and hardware are um, included in the binding package. On the top. Great. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. For getting the mounting holes in the right positions, I'm using a paper template I found online. These are really clever and uh, there are templates for all different bindings. And you can see this says Salomon, but I use Atomic bindings. And the Salomon, Atomic and Armada bindings, they are all the same. So first you need to cut the template into two parts, just down the middle. And all the instructions are already on the template. Then you have to line up both these guides on the template to your boot sole length. And this usually says on the boot, or you can just measure out from the heel to the toe of the boot. And this is super important that you get right on the, on the millimeter. So on these boots, you can see there's a 336 millimeter boot sole length. It usually says down on the heel. Or otherwise, as I said, just measure from the heel all the way to the toe for the boot sole length. Ratio. So I find my 336 right here, and also 336 on the other template. And now I need to line these two up. So you can cut a small hole right on the center line to help yourself lining up the center line so you get it all straight. And when you've got everything lined up, length and also the center line, it's just to take some tape and put the two parts of the template together. Okay, I forgot to tell you, but you also need this paper ruler that comes with the template for finding the center line on your skis. So just cut that out. It's the same piece of paper. Okay, when we have our paper template and also a small paper ruler, I use a piece of masking tape down the approximate center of the ski just to have something to mark the actual center of So I use the paper ruler and line up the same measurement to both edges of the ski to find the center. And just put a mark on the tape with a pencil. And I do this on a couple of points of the ski. And with the steel ruler, I mark the center line of the ski again on the tape with a pencil. And this is going to be used then to line up the paper, temp paper templates 
for uh, attaching the bindings to the skis. Okay, so, so so now we're getting a bit into the process here. Uh, and these are my skis. I'm kind of nervous. How how do you know that you're not going to go all the way through when you're drilling? I'm going to measure it three <laughs> times. Okay. Okay, got it. Ooh, it's cold, man. <sighs> Freezing. As you can see, no snow here in uh, Stockholm today. But soon we'll be in the POW country. Yeah, man. So on every ski, there is a recommended mounting point sent from the factory. Uh, often uh, indicated by a little arrow or as you can see on the Salomon skis there's a line in the middle and also on the Nordicas there's two dots that indicates the factory recommendation and there are a lot of opinions regarding how you should mount your skis these skis are going to be mounted or the bindings are going to be mounted one centimeter in front of factory recommendation to get a little less float in the pow but to get some more kick when skiing the groomers. Yeah man, it's gonna be awesome. So I just put a line here on factory recommendation and then I can use just a ruler to mark the mounting point. That's plus one now from factory recommendation. So I used the template we made up earlier to line up with the center line of the ski. I cut some more holes down the center line so I can see the line I drew on the ski through the template to make it easier lining up. And then the part on the middle of the template I lined up and uh, I used the boat zoom length to line that up. I lined it up with the mark I just made on the skis that on these skis are plus one centimeter from factory recommendation. And then I just put the whole template on with some pieces of tape and mark the holes on the ski. So really make sure you get this right because uh, once this is on and you start drilling your holes, there's no turning back. So make sure the tip is on the tip of the ski and the tail is on the tail. When I did my Salomons, I almost mounted the first binding the other way around. Whoa. Once you get the template taped on, you can use the boot to check that the markings are all right and you got the length correct. So I have my boot on here. You can see the toe line lines up with the two of the boat. And the heel edge lines up straight to the heel. So I use this center punch for wood to transfer the hole locations to the ski and this is going to mean that I can reuse the exact same template for the other binding and I don't have to make a new one if I've drilled through it. So when all the holes are transferred from the template onto the ski using the center punch, we can remove the template and save it for the next ski. You have to look quite closely, but you can see the small holes from the center punch in the ski, and that's where we're going to drill. So now the hole positions are all set up, and we can start drilling. But first, we need to know how big of a drill bit to use, and also how deep to drill. I just used this uh, Phillips head uh, on my ratchet wrench to uh, get the uh, a depth and I take the calipers to measure how far down the screw goes from the mounting plate. On these skis, seven millimeters. Also, for the size of the drill bit, generally on wood core skis, you use a 3.5 millimeter, and on a metal plate ski, you use a four millimeter drill bit. This is a wood core, and I'm going to use 3.5 millimeter drill bit. Okay, now it's time to put some holes in the skis. Yes, I start with a small two millimeter drill bit just to get the center punched holes a little larger for the bigger drill bit later. So this is a step I really recommend because the holes from the center punch are quite small and we need the exact locations for the bigger holes later. I'm putting back the 2mm drill bit 
and switching to a 3.5 mm drill bit for the bigger holes. I'm gonna mark the depth stop with a piece of tape to 7 mm as we measured with the calipers earlier. You really want uh, to have the tape on to prevent you from drilling all the way through and coming out on the underside because uh, that then, would be nice. That would be expensive. So I use a larger drill bit just to countersink the holes and get rid of the burr on top of the holes to get a good connection between the end plate and the ski. It's also freezing. It's freezing today. So we're using this behind the scenes. Oh, it's so warm. Uh, so now with the holes prepared, it's time for the actual mounting of the binding on the ski. Atomic provides a really good and comprehensive uh, guide of installation for this. So the first step, remove the tape. It's easy to forget, but you don't want a piece of tape under your bindings. We're all done with this now. We are going to start with the, the back plate and also the screw that mounts the front part of the binding. Put some wood glow <laughs> Uh, put some wood glue in. Put some wood glue in all of the holes. I used tight bond original, and this gives uh, the screws a little better adhesion to, to the holes. Especially with skis that are only wood and doesn't use a metal plate. So just a small drop of glue in every hole. So just use a toothpick to get the glue on all sides of the hole and then take some paper towel and remove the excess. So I'm starting with the front screw of the toe unit, just screwing it in. Okay, and now for the mounting plate of the heel unit. In my experience, these took quite a lot of force to get screwed in, so I found it really handy to use just a small ratchet wrench to get the force you want. So this is a pretty tough job and you really have to get this secured down good. Yeah, now all these uh, are mounted and there's a bit of a special process mounting the toe unit of these bindings. So you can see on the bottom side there is a slot for this screw to slot into. So you just put this on, find the slot, and before sliding it back you want these two silver screws on the back to be fully screwed in. Okay, when that's finished and you see no gap between the part and the ski, you take the whole to toe unit and slide it back all the way so it covers up the screws here. And now we're screwing the two black screws here all the way down as well. Yeah, finally. So this is the toe unit all done and now moving on to the two parts of the heel unit. Just into installation, uh, the screws are all uh, tight and tied down to the ski. Looks awesome. For installing the tail units, um, there are two parts. I found it easier to put the brakes into walk mode just by holding them down to the table and clipping up the brakes like this. And we also need to fold this lever down on the heel unit and we can use the ski to hold it while we push it down. Otherwise it's a bit hard. We have to clip these two parts together and then install the whole tail unit as one. So you can see on the brake there are two pins and on the heel unit itself there are two holes and these pins and holes both clip together. Like this, just a small click. Then you take the whole unit and slide it onto the rail until it meets the screw in the back. 
So now to pull the heel unit back on this rail, we are going to use this screw in the back and just any piece of paper to protect the ski a bit. There are some lines on the rail and we are going to take the heel unit back to the first line. Okay, all the way at the first line and this is going to be adjusted a bit later when the boot is in place to get the perfect position. But we start at the first line. Okay, so now all we have left is to adjust the binding so it fits your boot perfectly. We flip down the brakes, take our boot, it doesn't matter which one, just as a line. put it in the front and then fold it back up. Now the boot is in place and we have two things to adjust. The height of the support on the front of the foot and also the position of the heel unit. So to adjust the support in the front we need to pull the boot back. So we put our hand here and pull the boot back and you can see the toe lifts up. So there's contact between the top of the toe unit and the boot. This leaves a gap under here, which we are going to close. We use the screw on the back side. This screw to lift this support up until it meets the boots. And you want to be able to get a paper under and to easily slide it out again. So not too tight. Perfect. So the last thing is to adjust the heel unit of the binding and we're going to use the same screw again to get this small metal part lined up in between the two small arrows. And depending on if you were lucky or not installing uh, the heel unit, there's going to be a millimeter or two of uh, difference that you're going to have to adjust yourself. So just screw the heel unit until the metal part lines up with the two arrows. Okay, like that. All right, now we're all done. The boot is on the ski, and as you can see, it's working perfectly to get out and putting back in again. So we're ready now to go out and hit the slopes and uh, the boot is going to stay on the ski. And the last part of this is adjusting the DIN value of the heel unit and also the toe unit. The heel unit has a screw up top and a small gauge back here which shows the DIN and the toe unit has a screw here and a gauge up top that shows the DIN. You can use... And that's all for today guys, thanks for watching.